the solidity of the framework is one of the constant concerns of the pigeon fancier in the culture and in the selection of his pigeons. How to have strong pigeons from a young age? What does this solidity derive from? In this video, we will talk about the importance of minerals which are the essential constituent of bones. We will also discuss in detail the importance of trace elements which intervene in various enzymatic processes and which are essential as well as vitamins. Like all animals, the pigeon must feed to meet its energy needs, movements, flight and heat. He must also deal with the reconstitution of living tissues of his organism in adults, and their formation during growth. These needs are represented by proteins like nitrogenous matter, which serve to build living tissue. Fats or lipids used as reserves and for the production of heat. Carbohydrates such as sugars and flour which are mainly used for the production of motor energy. These various substances are needed in large quantities and are provided by the seeds forming the basis of the bird's diet. If they are missing, the animal starves, however, if we bring them to him in the pure state in even abundant quantities, the bird withers and ends up dying. It is therefore that seeds and natural foods contain something else in small quantities but nevertheless essential. This something else is vitamins and minerals, the former especially are necessary in very small quantities. Various minerals are essential to birds in general, some in relatively large quantities, others in very small quantities, these are the trace elements. Where do the mineral salts in the ration come from? We think first of course of the grit where the crushed oyster shells, sometimes the phosphates constitute an important source of calcium. And we know how much the breeders consume when they have pippants on the plateau. Let us first notice that shellfish contain practically no lime phosphates but only lime carbonate. In general, blocks of salt are used, which is already better than nothing, but too often calcium and phosphorus, essential minerals in larger quantities, are neglected, the salt blocks, based on sodium chloride, contain only traces of phosphorus and calcium. The only rich organic source is dry brewer's yeast which contains 15 grams of calcium and 12 grams of phosphorus per kilo, in a highly digestible form. Of course, we can provide the phosphorus in the form of dicalcium phosphate better assimilated than the tricalcium, mixed with grit or salt clay. But the natural source of phosphorus is phytin, phytic acid, which exists for pigeon fanciers, in wheat, barley and corn. All of them contain about the same amount of wheat 0.5 calcium, 4 grams phosphorus per kilo, barley, 0.1 calcium and 3.5 phosphorus, corn, 0.1 calcium and 3 phosphorus, but the minerals are very differently assimilated. In fact, phytic acid cannot be assimilated by the body until it has been broken by a substance called dicetase, contained in the seed, phytase. This dicetase acts at the start of digestion when the seed is potted in the gizzard in the presence of the water absorbed by the pigeon after its meal. Wheat contains a lot of phytase, barley less, corn very little. We can therefore see the benefit of a mixture of seeds containing a good proportion of wheat and not too much corn during the breeding period. Note that it is more or less the same during the competition period, phosphorus playing a very important role in muscular and nervous work. The phosphoric acid resulting from this biochemical reaction then combines with calcium, lime phosphate, and other mineral elements, sodium, magnesium, manganese, potassium, trace elements, whose activity is also very important in the body. The contribution of grit rich in lime carbonate and other carbonates therefore knows its full physiological explanation. It is only in a balanced phosphorus calcium supplement that the contribution of a mineral compound rich in phosphorus, 8 to 10 percent, and calcium, 20 to 24 percent, can be useful. The presence of a grit is always necessary. That of the phosphocalcic supplement only afterwards. The binding of minerals to the protein framework of growing or repairing bone is the direct result of vitamin D, indirect of vitamin A. Vitamin D, the D3 form being by far the most active in birds is a derived from body fat under the effect of sunlight. In birds, protected from the sun by thick plumage, the formation of natural vitamin D3 in the body is irregular and random. Therefore, artificial intake is always advisable. Strict requirements are in the order of 50 IU per day per pigeon. 
The doses can be increased up to 150 or 200 IU per day during growth, before laying, etc., the presence of an excess renewed every day in the blood having a certain tonic effect. The indicated doses must however be respected. A large excess of vitamin D3 renewed every day causes accidents of overcalcification with blocking of the joints, bone deformations. It grows small bones on long bones etc. Vitamin D3 is stored up to a certain dose in the liver for about 10 days. We can therefore be satisfied, during the rearing period, of one or two administrations per week. It is presented in various forms, capsules, tablets and solutions. The most convenient being undoubtedly the form soluble in water, easy to dose, easily absorbed. In the past, cod liver oil was used, which was inconvenient, of questionable dosage and smelly. It is a form now quite outdated. Vitamin A is the main active ingredient in this cod liver oil. It exists in corn and greenery in the form of B-carotene, provitamin A. The needs of the pigeon are therefore generally satisfied by the basic diet. However, as it plays an essential role in growth, the quality of the feather and the vitality, a supplement is always useful, especially since without danger, this vitamin is almost always presented in vitamin complexes, linked to vitamin D3 and to others very often. And then there is heredity. Those who are used to handling a lot of pigeons in a lot of colonies have noticed the difference. Certain breeds of pigeons have a strong, solid frame, I would say peasant. Others a fine frame and just as strong. Palpation of the front and rear forks, and the keel bone are the usual criteria for assessing bone structure. Still others have these soft, flexible bones that are quite insufficient. As we have seen, the presence of intestinal parasitism conditions mineral fixation on young growing bone. And some colonies live in this latent parasitism, with crises generally linked to pigeon fatigue, atmospheric humidity and loft hygiene. The pigeons therefore have, among other things, defective skeleton. In particular, there are often not youngsters with a deviated wishbone. Heredity is then not in question. Because pigeons from this colony taken care of usefully and put in a rational loft will give young birds with much better bone than theirs because they are not related from a young age. We can therefore see the difficulty there is in speaking of true heredity in this problem. All we can say is that the shape, the smoothness of the bones of a breed is hereditary. Finally, vitamin D plays two essential roles in the development and maintenance of healthy bones. It contributes to the absorption of calcium present in the food which is in the intestines and it also ensures the good renewal and mineralization of the bones of pigeons. Bones, which are made up of living tissue, need certain nutrients to keep them healthy and strong.